95th Oscars happened this past weekend, and since then, I've been wondering, did they get it wrong? Of the five films that were nominated for Best Original Score, All Quiet on the Western Front took home the prize. But was there another nominee that may have been overlooked? The Banshees of Inisherin very specifically went after a sound that was not typical of an Irish film. When director Martin McDonough approached Carter Burwell about the sound of the film, he pointed to some unexpected influences, including Bulgarian folk music, <laughs> Balinese gamelan, and even Brahms. And the results here created something subtle, but very interesting. Oh. It almost sounds like Oblivion NPC music. Call the judge and Call get some fun. This score was really unique, but so subtly and beautifully incorporated that I almost wonder if its subtlety was its downfall. The exotic influences successfully gave this score a unique feel, but I wonder if it didn't win in part because it played it a little bit safe. Maybe it didn't steer into those exotic influences enough. By the way, we are about to drop a massive spring sale for just a couple of days only, so details about that in the description. Now, I've only actually seen one of these films, so I wanted to dive into this completely blind. The score for Babylon struck me as something that you don't typically hear in film. We normally expect this vast, beautiful orchestral sound, not bombastic, chaotic, big bit. And on one hand, it feels straight out of the 1920s. But then on the other hand, there's this whole other thing about it that adds this layer that we've never really heard before. Hey. During the writing process, Justin Hurwitz knew that the traditional jazz sound of the 1920s wouldn't be enough on its own. It needed to be more aggressive and in your face. I was blown away by the script. And once we started talking about what the score could be, what if we use the instrumentation of a 1920s jazz band? but hinting at rock and roll. This theme just struck me as a ton of fun. Wow, okay. Well, I have no idea what any of that was about. I just found myself immediately hearing that E minor blues harmonic space and, and just kind of noodling along. Kind of a bluesy sort of sound. Which is pretty easy to do when you know you're just sticking to this one sound and you know that this note bank will work fairly consistently. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button because it actually does a lot to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Everything Everywhere All at Once was the film that I did see and I was blown away by the immersiveness. But I don't remember specifically noticing the score and I actually think that that was one of the reasons it was so successful. Beautiful. I'm a sucker for movie scores that utilize this thing where you can kind of hold this chord out with, with synthesizers that are kind of morphing in this really mellow, kind of mystical way. And you can hold that out over everything else that's going on underneath here. Sun Lux, the group responsible for the score, even went as far as to say that everything everywhere all at once is a film that didn't need their help in building its emotional landscape. The Daniels had the insight early on that one of the jobs of the score was that it needed to communicate a very specific feeling of a very specific universe in a very short amount of time. One over the three, four. Woo! There it is. For me, I think that this score could have easily won. And I think that's due to its well-crafted relationship with the film itself. And the fact that this film won Best Picture is in no small part due to its musical environment. It is an incredibly beautiful and unique soundtrack that could have easily taken home the prize. But unfortunately for Sun Lux, they were up against the GOAT. And the results may surprise you. John Williams got his 53rd Oscar nomination at the age of 90. He is second in nominations only to Walt Disney. And I want you to ask yourself, of the 53 Oscar nominations John Williams has had since 1967, how many can you name? Star Wars, Superman, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., Jaws, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Home Alone, Schindler's List. These are the most iconic soundtracks of all time, let alone from one man. But let me ask you a question. Have you listened to John Williams' Oscar-nominated score from 1973 for the film Cinderella Liberty? Or how about the 1989 John Williams' Oscar-nominated soundtrack for the movie Accidental Tourist? No? Me neither. Here's the point. Look, for me, John Williams is the greatest cinematic composer of all time. I mean, you guys know this. On this channel, we love John Williams. But if I'm being completely honest, it's got me wondering if John Williams kind of phoned this one in a little bit. If you are a 90-year-old John Williams and you write a score for a film by Steven Spielberg on the 50th anniversary of your career together, you get nominated for an Oscar. I'm not saying that this score isn't beautiful. In fact, I'm not even saying that it wasn't the perfect pairing for the film. I'm just saying that 
of the iconic themes that John Williams has written throughout his career, I just don't see this as being one that's particularly memorable. And I bring up the random nominations throughout history because that's okay. John Williams is not obligated to write a household icon of a theme every time he puts pencil to paper. That's completely unrealistic even for the GOAT. Do you agree or do you think my most favorite music Johnny's ever written? I have never heard a score for a war film that is quite as jarring and weirdly disturbing as this. Now, I use the phrase weirdly disturbing for a very specific reason. This is not the score from a horror film. It's not the score from a sad drama or even an action movie. It has elements of those genres, but it has something else that none of those other things have. It's dark and it's ominous, but it's also filled with tension and this bizarre sense of mystery delivered in these punches that are equal parts unsettling as they are shocking. The score captures this unsettled, disturbed feeling so well, and with just three notes, launches viewers into this chaotic world of unpredictable horror. Director Edward Berger told Bertelman, I want to have the feeling from his stomach that he always feels when he's in the trenches. We get that visceral feeling as viewers, and when those jarring notes crash into the scene, we know something terrible is lurking. Of the five scores that were nominated for this award, I can confidently say that for me, I feel like they got this one right. There was some incredible music nominated for the award this year, and I certainly would not want to be in charge of picking just one. But if you have to, I think I personally come up with the same answer. But I want to know what you think. Would you have chosen this for best original score, or do you think that the best original score wasn't even nominated this year? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Goodbye.